Hello everyone, it's Friday night and it is weekender time once more. On this week's show, we have a very fantasy feel to the whole slew of things coming at you. Uh, before we get into the show itself, we have a massive prize from store.ontabletop.com this week. One lucky viewer will be able the chance to win not one, but two starter sets for Conquest from Parabellum Wargames. A Nords one-player starter set and a Wadrun one-player starter set. Two factions, two games, First Blood and the Last Argument of Kings. To be in with a chance to win, you need to pop a comment below, be a subscriber to the channel, and if you can do the socially things as well, smashing. Otherwise, sit back and relax because your fantastical weekend starts here. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Weekender. I'm joined this week by John, Shay, and Ben. Hello, guys. How are Hello. you? Hi. And it's a surprise. <laughs> always a surprise. Who can, who can say who's going to be here from any day to the next? We certainly That's don't know. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we are easing ourselves into our last Weekender before UK Games oh, Expo. God, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because we need all the easing we can get mm -hmm. uh, over the next few days. The studio will be packed into tiny boxes and chucked in the back of a van to scoot us off to uh, Bram for uh, a weekend's worth of live streaming. Who oh, knows yes, how that's yeah. going to go? <laughs> we don't know. That could be very interesting indeed. All plans are great until they... Oh, no plan survives contact with the enemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The enemy in this case being what, Jerry? Uh, people. Members of the public. People. Members of the Members public. Of the public yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Other <laughs> other streamers and actors and designers and whoever else is going to be on the stage with us because we've got a whole, so a many whole people. A whole brew ha ha mm. coming. And I look at it and you go like three people on stage and you go, that's great. And then you go, like, we'll need three mics for for the three people on stage, plus a mic stand for the audience to line up behind. I'm thinking do we have a mic stand? I don't think we do. I think you'll find the audience will be holding that microphone. Don't drop an audience. <laughs> there will be one person from our team holding a holding microphone. The microphone. <laughs> so nobody you, runs off with it. You are the mic stand kiff. <laughs> attach, uh, attach it to a chain, attach that to a Braves block, like a petrol station uh, yeah. bathroom key so nobody can run off with it. <laughs> but anyway, long story short, too late. Uh, we will not be here for a weekender next week because we will be live streaming throughout the weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Friday, Sunday. Saturday, Sunday, yeah. So you'll have a whole Galvi bucket load of us uh, and celebrities, real people. Shut up and sit down. We'll be there, which would be pretty awesome. No rolls barred. Roll Sir Britannia. Ian, Sir Ian Livingstone, Sir Ian as Ian I believe Jack. he demands to be Luke uh, referred Gygax to. as well. On Luke, the stage. son of Gary. Yes. Yeah. I can't remember. Um, Gary Gygax's wife's name to to do the whole lineage bit. I, I really should have looked that up. <laughs> Look, son of thing, son of thing. Anyway, he's not last of a murdered house though. So, <laughs> don't know. Give it time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we'll be UKGEing for you um, in a in a different way than we've done it in previous years. So there'll still be the live blog running. You'll still be able well, to dip into that and see photos and bits and bobs and things but we're, we're going to be doing a lot more um oh, well sort of early early morning tv like tv am that's when the kids will get isn't it on the sofa yeah. yeah good morning hobbyists yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah that type of thing uh so feel free to uh to pop by there should be some sort of massive ring in the sky like the, the sign of the donut that you can come and find us under uh, and there will be chairs and stuff in front of that as well so yes. that people can sit and watch bask in our eminence or uh through through rotten tomatoes um please don't throw rotten tomatoes not on me anyway 
other people, feel free to take him. Go nuts. Justin's there. You can puzzle at him all you like. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise if you can hit Justin with a run to no, there's no prize. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I better nip that, one. Nip that one in the bud. <laughs> there's no there's no prize, but there is our eternal respect. <laughs> <laughs> right. It is not the only thing that's happening next week, though. Uh, because next weekend on the 4th of June, uh, the Summer of Plunder is kicking off. Uh, now, if you're unaware of the Summer of Plunder, this is uh, the third annual piratey goodness campaign um, done by Blood and Pigment and um, Timber and Seal and Firelock Games. So it's a, it's community driven although it is supported by the creators if that makes sense um they're changing up how it works this year a little bit um there's a lot going on so we will put the link for this below because i'm not going to go through every bit of this because we will be there forever if we do however long story short blood and plunder is a piracy game Oaken Iron is a piracy ship-based game, small scale. Uh, you can, throughout the months of June, July, and August, play any number of games of this that you wish in any format. So big land battles, huge naval battles, um, mixtures, amphibious actions, whatever it was. Anything in between. <laughs> Anything in between, between you and your friends, or even solo, because there are solo rules for Blood and Plunder, um, and feed those results back. Uh, this year, they're going to be using a campaign map. And as you can oh, see here, sort of a, a little sort of breakdown of it. So you've got your Dutch, Spanish, French, uh, British, pirates, Native Americans. Um, and they will all be feeding in to a overall commander for each of the factions. And then the commanders um, will be sort of divvying out points and orders. And, and there's a whole grand campaign on the go where people won't really know what's happening until things happen so at the end of every week your commander will choose where he's going to go to so if you're interested in getting involved and going well english commander let's let's go and sack new orleans because why not sack new i mean really what else is it there for um then you can do that and the frenchies hopefully they'll have defended it in some way and if not then they may find that things are going to be overrun so they're going to use like campaign points from victories to do right like random events and and things like that that are nation specific um so when you're playing to stop people just spamming I have one, I have one, I have one. Uh, there'll be a little entry form. This is last year's sort of example, but uh, this year's will be more or less the same, where you put in who you played, what you played, points value, uh, images, so they know it's not just lies, damned lies. And you can do more. Some of the previous ones, you've got really great like storyboard narrative um, battle reports. So you get to That's see cool. how other people are coming through and what they're doing as well, Yeah, um, yeah. which is always good, clean family fun other big thing is every time you submit a battle report apart from obviously hampering or uh, extending your faction's particular lead um, you'll be put in for a draw at the end of the campaign uh, for a big bucket load of prizes last year they gave away two thousand dollars worth actually over two thousand dollars worth of um, piracy goodness courtesy of, of people like firelock and some of the uh, the uh, sponsored people's um, nice. this year i imagine it will be something equivalent if not bigger especially now that they've got those all those plastics there could be some, the big plastic sets are out now aren't they so, there could be some yeah. very very big chunky prizes i imagine some sort of huge resin sixth rate should definitely be in there for fun and games but definitely needs rigging so, no yeah. no it doesn't <laughs> they've got oars they can paddle <laughs> no need <reckon. laughs> um so it starts on the fourth like i said next uh saturday he said in a high questioning voice no yes no sunday to saturday i can't remember i think i run sunday to saturday no because it must be saturday to... anyway it starts, it starts, starts on sunday. the fourth that's next sunday then it is a sunday to saturday per week um mm -hmm. finishes on the 21st of august so you've got a whole summer's worth of play um and to coincide with the start of it firelock are going to be kicking off this very day if you haven't already seen it a summer of plunder sale so Brilliant. if you're interested in picking up a few bits and pieces or expanding some of your stuff before it kicks off uh, then that's going to be a good way of doing it 
Um, but apart from the the main sort of people running it, you'll see there there's a whole list of sponsors. Some of these are the likes of um, Tales of Sales. So that's No Dice, No Glory. Um, people might be aware of that website. They um, they do a lot of historic gaming. That's their Blood and Plunder specific um, vlog series, blog series, um, podcast. Is that what the kids call it? Anyway, uh, Plunder Den, great YouTube channel. Does so he did a set of stackable buildings recently as like a you know he was going off to i think gen con was like i need to bring some terrain so he came up with a concept of making stackable like nesting oh, dolls wow. but of buildings that all that's fit inside cool. so that you could transport nice. them easily that's a really good definitely pop pop by the plunder den um in fact pop by most of these um things from the basement obviously is uh oh they're, is they're, a, a, they're great uh, they're stunning stuff, yeah, yeah they've made a, a great set of mdf um terrain for the, the sort of the Spanish coast and that sort of thing. So you can see the national commanders and sub commanders there. So all of, all of your particular tactics will be thought out by these great people. And hopefully, I'm just going to say, if, if not all of the players don't look a lot up. like uh, Paul Pickle that we saw earlier, earlier I'll, I I'll be so. very upset. I want everyone to be Everybody like Paul Pickle. Wax moustaches <laughs> yes. on, on the go. Um, yeah. So like I say, a ton of stuff coming, uh, weekly game objectives plus the overall arcing campaign plus the events plus the narrative plus 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 uh if you are interested in the age of piracy and taking part in something a bit global a bit different uh, mm. definitely worth hopping over to blood and pigment and checking out the summer of plunder and making your plans like i say even if you're just starting to get into it um the fact that there are solo rules so even if you don't have an opponent yet you can still take part um while you're building your forces up I'm hopefully going to be speaking to some of the some of the uh, people involved in it uh, and seeing where that's going to go. Don't know when that's going to happen because we're being chucked in the back of a van with a suitcase soon. So if I don't get to speak to them before it kicks off, uh, I have said we might do a couple of sort of midway point interviews. So maybe end of, where everything's going. end of June, yeah. end of July. So you know, like a month in two months mm. in and then like a roundup i may still do those anyway to be brutally honest mm. um because i'm like that so what you're saying jerry is people need to prepare their grappling hooks and get ready for a boarding action on yes to blood mm. and plunder yeah yep okay. oh yeah yep 100 yeah. yeah. all of that in fact um they need to set sail to the summer of plunder oh god and uh, cut, cut cutlass and teeth Swinging yes. across on the rigging. Yes. Seen somebody yes. do that once. He'd read about it in a book. Yeah. Topless yeah. John, we called him. <laughs> Came off like a hard boiled egg. <laughs> they need to splice the main sail that yep. Firelock Games are putting on. Oh, shiver my timbers. <laughs> right. I'm going to move away from this before, um, okay. before he gets any further involved in terrible, terrible pirate puns. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, don't let. Ben put you off. It looks like it's going to be an awful lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, now it's time to take a look at the most important part of the show. It is, of course, the indie of the week. Ooh. And this week, it's Darth Cheese. Yep. It's not Darth Cheese, um, but it looks like that to me, and it's in French, and I can't pronounce it. However, it is from trenches to barricades when translated into a language that I <laughs> apparently can speak. Um, so it's a fascinating little compact and bijou range um, that crosses a couple of different sort of divides or theaters, mm -hmm. I suppose, time period wise, it's relatively similar though. So you're right. looking at early 20th century. Um, so either just prior to the first world war or during the first world war and they have two clinker ranges i'm gonna say i see a lawrence of the arabian yeah description the the lawrence of the arabia is great um yeah. now they do have in fact i might actually start there just to give you the heads up on this so they do have a couple of games okay um one is a board game um where you are Le Pelle du Desert. Mm. Ottomans against uh, the Arabs during the Arab insurrection. And it's okay. a, a sort of a, a board game where you have to do as a, it's like find the, the hidden, 
Arabs in the desert type of affair. Ah, it's, it's, it's a bit okay. peculiar. It's also all in French. So I'm, like I said, I'm just prefacing, <laughs> I'm prefacing the fact that they do do systems, but they only do them in French. So we're so really if you are from France. This is perfect. Or, so. or if you speak French, well done, yeah. you. Uh, unless you're Canadian, I mean, it's, you know, terrible. But, um, <laughs> but they also have the, uh, the from the trenches to the barricades game system as well. Uh, again, that neck of the woods. Uh, so a skirmish game. 30 miniatures aside. Um, and again, similar. Interesting thing about both that and Le Belle du Desert uh, is it seems to be played out on like a grid system. I like um, that. Yeah. Which is why they do a range of mats which mm -hmm. are gridded. Oh, and, and different that, sizes as well, which is kind of cool. Yeah, um, mm. which is interesting because there's a whole slew of games that work off gridded map yeah map systems like mm -hmm. to the strongest and and um oh uh age of penda and things like that so uh finding mats that actually have grid systems on them is always nice i think they do a few different flavors so there's not just the desert there's also a um sort of grassy type thing i want the muddy field somewhere yeah. that type of thing where's my accessories there's my accessories here we go so you can have your muddy Meadow battleground. Mud. Yeah. Um, so, you know, not going to be for everyone, but uh, if you plan on playing their particular rule set, handy. And like I say, there are other rule sets out there that having a gridded tabletop mat for would not be the worst in the world. However, fleeing from that and having a look at the tiny fighting men, because that's really why we're here, isn't it, though? Isn't it? Uh, we'll take a look at the Russian Civil War first. Uh, because it's obviously with um, Blood and Valor coming out of late and a big, big, big chunk is devoted to the Russian Civil War. Uh, it means that if you're after forces for it, if you're after your Bolsheviks or your armoured cars, that sort of thing, there's mm. a ton of stuff in here and it's absolutely drop-dead gorgeous. Um, so I'll chuck in a Cossack regiment first. Because everybody loves Cossacks with the big furry hats. Very nice. And uh, great looking figures. Uh, I believe I'm going to butcher the name, I expect. Um, but I believe all the Russians were sculpted by Propylene Felicicu. That's definitely not how it's pronounced. Anyway, Polish <laughs> sculptor. Um, <laughs> now, the first, the right first name is definitely Propylene. Yes. Uh, presumably, he's, that's not a real Polish name. That's a like stage name um but who can say uh but he does some terrific work they're very not nicely detailed i'm not sure what else he's yeah. he's he's worked on i, I had a wink news at his face page uh, and he's done a lot of work with a lot of other people as well mm -hmm. um there's a bolshevik cavalry but these are all multi-part metal and uh, as you can see Terrific amount of detail. Some people I know will also be looking at that going, ter terrific amount of flash, but just, you know, suck it up, people. Sharp knife. That's what clippers and Off knives are for. Yeah. 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 <laughs> some people. Some people. They're like that. But it's it's one of those, I mean, theoretically, you could use some of these for the First World War Russians anyway, because they are yeah, just the, the same the same people doing the same thing. Could they? Um, would they still be okay for Russo-Japanese war as well? Then at the same time, because that was oh yeah, more or less around the same time. Period, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Before they uh, they started factionally fighting. Yeah, yeah. The war that sort of broke Russia, really. Isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, so many of them, and yet they just keep on coming back. <laughs> those, those big guns are great though also you notice it's the white and bolshevik cannons so white and red army so yeah, in most cases yeah. it just means you're going to be changing up the um bits of the uniform or the commander so you you lose the your lovely red stars. behind the things yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anon blanc look look how happy they are not for ah, long, i get you. to shoot people Whee! yeah <laughs> then things will all go horribly horribly wrong yeah. a lot of cavalry which is just great because there were so many of them thundering through the streets yeah very nice uh, i want to say goodbye to you and hello to you so bolshevik major i mean he's a cracking sculpt he looks yeah, amazing yeah well, i know you're you're keen now aren't you you do a little bolshevik force ah shade hmm do you do jerry i do have a russian civil war menu 
Yeah. Blood and Ballast Call, eh? <laughs> I was going to say I could be the White Army, but to be brutally honest, there are so many different factions mm. fighting in that um, Blood and Valor uh, that it doesn't necessarily have to be them. And uh, they do all the gubbins for you then. So they've got the infantry, they've got the leaders, they've got the artillery, they've got yeah. the vehicles. So, I mean, yeah. obviously they're they're gearing stuff towards their their rule set where it's sort of 30, 30 aside yeah. type of thing. So it's it's about the same figure count as um, Blood and Valor as well. Mm. Um, but I mean, just look at them. They're great. Look at them with their modern yeah. machine gun tearing forward. And it's always nice to see dead people. I like casualty models. Casualty markers. Because yeah. if could be markers if you're going to be playing um, a bigger mounted bases, then having having some casualties strewn about makes it look like they're actually fighting rather than just toy soldiers. Yeah. Uh, and this particular unit were uh, apparently Scottish, so that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> there were many different factions in the Russian Civil oh, War. of Scotland. <laughs> uh, the winter dress. I think it was one of my favorite. I was like, I mean, if you're going to fight. Um, in Russia, Man. you expect them to be, you know, dealing with the savage elements, and uh, this poor fellow having to lug that forward. God, yeah, like a stormtrooper. You go, boy. That's really cool. I like the. Uh, I assume that's their kind of cold weather protection on their backs, kind of thing that they've got. With, I think it looks like those things that you get with little tiny mitten holes on the end. <laughs> I, I believe that is some from it's the hood. hat with mitten glove. They, yeah, they yeah, yeah. Wrap, <laughs> the, the two little flappy bits on either side wrap around your face when the hood is up. So. Right. Okay. Yeah. We I'm were going close. With John's thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, not not a million miles away. Obviously, their mittens would be dangling off their arms. If anybody wants to sculpt little green stuff mittens and dangle them from their sleeves like they're on strings, that would be great, yeah. and we would be forever in your debt. Once we've done shooting each other, we can have a snowball fight. <laughs> yeah. but like I say, the um, it's the, it's the red and white army. Uh, with a host of armored, I'm, I'm really tempted to get some of the armored cars because I'm sure I can find uses for them elsewhere. He's very far away. You're very far away. Why are you so far away, tiny armored car? Um, but the others, the uh, sort of the standard ones we see in the first page in resin, are really really nice figures. They're so, really nice. I like that they've done. They've focused in on a on a particular setting and a particular mm. battle. Well, war that was fought mm. out. And they're just basically going, no, we're going to own this. We're going to do the miniatures that you need for this particular conflict and just do them really well. I think it's a really nice yeah. way of doing things. Uh, and, and I mean, they've, they've come a long way in a very short amount of time because mm -hmm. Darth Cheese only really set up as a company early last year. And then the, the Russians came out in, in short order. Wow. Um, then the Arab Revolt, which we're going to take a look at now, um, is oh, I'll open the Bolsheviks before we go. Is um, is sort of new this year. Uh, so in another year, they've got sort of two fleshed out skirmish factions for the Russian Civil War, and now they're working on the Arab uh, Revolt as well. Brilliant! Um, they are just classic. Look at that They're lovely miniatures with his big mustache. Yeah. You do one, Stalin. Anyway. If really, we, really characterful, and the other thing that's nice about them is that because of the size of the game, which is around like that thirty model mark, yeah, you've got a lot of troops in there that feel very unique individuals yeah. as well, which is which is what you want to see at that scale. Which is, good. Uh, I mean, if if you don't have somebody you can force into playing with you, like Paul, oh, um, then it's it's reasonable that you can pick up both factions, um, yeah, yeah, both nations yeah. for yourself, or well, factions in in the case of the the Russian Civil War, but this. This range kind of blew me away. Now, unfortunately, these are not made out of sweet, sweet metal like nature intended. These are 3D prints. However, right. um, he has been putting together a set of uh, Arabs and wow. British British officers and um, sort of, um, I was going to say auxiliary, but they, they weren't really. They were, um, what do you call it, John, when you send somebody off to tell people how to fight? Oh, advisor? Advisor. That's the word I was looking for. Thank God for that. <laughs> so British officers and advisors uh, right. alongside the Arabs, which it's a, it's a really interesting point. Obviously, there are railways, which is great for Lloyd. Um, and getting your hands on Ottomans is very easy. But finding the various Arab figures um, is probably a little trickier in most yeah. cases. And generally, when people think World War One. They think Europe, as we always do, and kind of forget about stuff that happened out in Palestine and out in Syria and all the rest of it. Uh, and these are just 
gorgeous models. Oh, lovely. When you say that they're 3D prints, then are they 3D printed resins that they then they send out to you physically? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Cool. So they're not selling STLs. They're they're shipping you a physical thing, right? Uh, like nature intended. Because if I'm buying stuff, I don't want ones and zeros. Ones and zeros can stay in the box. Well, there's enough of those on the bill. Hey, <laughs> I'll just chuck out a few. I more. am on fire. Oh, fire. He says you really are. Are you? <laughs> I, I think yes, so. John. <laughs> there's good old Lawrence of Arabia himself. Very nice. I love that model. It's really cool. Yeah, and you can also get them mounted as well. Monte. So, I mean, this this range in particular, the um, Lawrence and, and the and sort of the Arab Rising stuff mm. is just great. Mm. Just so much character in all of the yeah. sculpts. And when, you, when you're, you know, doing small scale stuff and you've got somebody as famous uh, as... Um, Faisal and Lawrence and, and all the rest, but you know, then why not go the the extra yeah, mile definitely. and get get some uh, really bespoke, I suppose, models. You could sit and watch the film whilst you do the painting. Yeah, you could. Yeah, yeah, that's a weekend sorted. Yeah. Uh, obviously, there are also Ottomans. Uh, a little less interesting because they're just blokes running about the place. There's a lot of the Ottomans. <laughs> <laughs> Not about furniture between a them. lot of them. <laughs> like, oh. can't bring him anywhere. He's uh, he's he's gone wild. Uh, you best not be doing this at UKGE. Oh, one hundred percent, he will be. Boy, will be getting the smack. <laughs> he's on a high. He's on a high. I say. Uh, uh. So. Obviously, a smaller range at the moment for both the Arab Revolt and the Ottomans, but um, but you can see obviously where they're going, uh, yeah. which is good. And I mean, if you're if you pick up the Arabs from here, if you do that three D printing thing, um, War Games Atlantic have done Ottoman add-ons for they their do, yeah. German plastics, so you can mm. potentially then pick up the 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 Ottomans a bit cheaper, and then through the extra cash towards getting Lawrence and his companions. Yeah, some Just, of the you know, more yeah. specific models that you yeah. need. Yeah, uh, there's also currently a set of two French kits. Uh, so, little colonial French with a Hotchkiss. I wish I'd found that earlier because I'd see trying to find a Hotchkiss in 28 mil it was a monumental pain in my backside <laughs> for our World War One French <laughs> army that that we've been building recently. Um, and I managed to find some, uh, but I just wish I'd find these first. Just saying. Anyway. People should contact me with what they do in case I need it. Send me lists of stuff you do, people. And then uh, some officers with their That's uh, so cool. I really pack, like that. pack ponies. Yeah. Vive la France. Break out the mayonnaise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's their national anthem, isn't it? <laughs> mayonnaise. Pretty sure it is. They are going to not want us to ever look at their stuff ever again, are they? Uh, but yeah, could you not feature us ever? Um. Yeah, please, please don't talk about us or our nation when we come round and set fire to your house. And we'll do it because we're French. Anyway, the uh, I can say that the range itself is from the trenches to the barricades, de, but in French, de, de tranches ou barricades. And, and it's it'll be fascinating to see where they go. Um, if they'll expand the the ranges a bit further or if they're going to go into something else afterwards. Because I imagine if they've got what they need for the Russian Civil War uh, and they're just starting to do the same with the, the Arab Revolt and the Ottomans, will they just get to the same sort of size of catalogue for the Arabs and, and Ottomans and then go, right, well, we don't need any more for skirmish, so we'll just mm. leave it at that. Uh, and then go to another period, or will they? They or not, not another period. I, another I'd sense. Theater. I'd sense that the creators are particular fans of that World War One period. So maybe we'll just see them look at another very yeah. specific portion of that period and bring that to life. Or maybe they're yeah. just looking for those little niche areas that haven't yeah. been covered, that haven't been explored yet. Maybe. In which yeah. case, I mean, the uh, um, Sano. Or so we might get the Japanese. At some point as well. Oh then. yeah. If, yeah. if they've already done the Russians, then it, you know, instead of sticking just there, just expand. Yeah, definitely. Uh, east. Do the other Japanese side. Yeah. Could mm. be a fascinating way to do things. Mm. But yeah, definitely one to check out, uh, especially if you're interested in getting involved in some World War One skirmishing fun. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, by the way, 
if you are French, speak French, and have any of those games, I'm dying to find out about that sort of board game one with the, the little hit, yeah, it looks really MDF cool. tokens. Because I'm chits and counters, yeah, yeah, yeah. So just to see what it's like, because I'm I'm by nature a curious man. Just thought I'd let you know. Mm-hmm. Right, we're going to take a quick swish, and when we come back, we'll dive into the news. Coming to you from the center of Northwestern Europe. Covering board games, war games, card games, and all that sh- you love. It's the b- f- News. <laughs> okay, we're back to take a look at the news. And first off, it's a little bit of news for me. It is, yeah. Because mm. I'm so great. Uh, if you are unaware of Fighting Hedgehog and mm. their game Clash of Spears, uh, then I'm very disappointed in you because it is great. Um, they have just released this week the Archean Companion. Now, this is a little bit different. It's a little bit woo, a little bit wee. It's a geezer. So Clash of Spears was a Punic War. Um, I'm going to say skirmish game. Uh, it's sort of aimed at 40 to 50 models. I know some people have played it with a multitude. They turn into a whole day affair. Um, and then after that, they released Rise of uh, Eagles, which is the Imperial Roman Dacian sort of period. And then uh, they've also done Clash of Katanas, most recently for Feudal Japan. The Archean Companion is separate and distinct. Uh, it is a fantasy and magic supplement for Clash. Now, you will need Clash of Spears to play it. Uh, it just contains uh, a modicum of rules for you to fantasy up your stuff. Interesting thing about this for me is Clash started with the guys um, wanting to replay Warhammer in a more interesting way. And so they developed this in their childhood. Uh, And then eventually it became Clash and they went to Historic. But then some friends and, and fans started working on a fantasy version of it. It's essentially going back round to uh warhammer again uh, it's all cyclical everything <laughs> is circles like the great do not um but this is going to be a living rule book so currently uh the book itself is divided into four sections um you've got new rules how to bring in magic uh to clash magic is quite interesting we'll get to that in a minute uh then you've got new soldiers of war gear to add to the standard so the this has grown a bit because they didn't want people to have to have multiple clash books to play it. So this, some of the stuff you may already have seen in things like um, rise of Eagles or in clash of katanas. But if you don't play those periods and don't have those books, they've included the weapons and armor in here uh, for that point. And then the last thing is the army lists and the army lists also contains a point system. Um, If you have stuff in your collection that fall outside of the current armies, which are things like the Elven Kingdoms here, uh, which are very Tolkien-esque. Yeah, um, very Silmarillion in many yeah. regards. <laughs> or they've got Dark Dwarves, they've got Raiders from the North, so a bit Viking barbarian they've got Draugr, they've got the Ghosts of Canai, mm-hmm. uh, which is a really nice one. It's all the dead Romans from when Hannibal ruffle stomped them back from the dead. Um, Men of the South, which is kind of a blend of... Um, Men and men and dwarves, like Gondorians and yeah, Rohan and stuff as well in there. Orcs of the White Hand, Army of the Red Eye, Men of the Mark, blah blah blah. So mm. the idea is this will continually be added to. So new forces, new races, new spells will get chucked in there. Um, Clash as a game system has a couple of things, uh, which is you have a command and control structure. So you need commanders and heroes to order units to do things. Um, If they get outside of that command radius, then they can still do stuff, but it's a little bit more difficult. And then within that units can act and react to other units fighting. So it's, it's alternating activations, but you can interrupt, but then you need to make commands to interrupt and it takes some of your actions and impetus out of your, your turn. Um, So if a unit of, infantry is coming towards archers you don't have to wait until they've moved moved and then attacked you after everybody gets one action for free but then your second action onwards you can interrupt your opponent if you want by burning one of your own actions so that there's like um resource management because you don't want to overexert a unit because then they can't react to something that your opponent's doing yeah um which is 
cool. It's also good because of the new magic system. So there's not many magic spells in there at the moment, and they're relatively light. Um, like myself, they don't like magic to overwhelm a game. Uh, magic should be something that's difficult. It shouldn't be whiz, bang, pop, chuck it, biggity, boppity, boo, boo. We've all turned into snakes in a basket, whatever it happens to be. None of that nonsense. <laughs> you know, raising the dead or firing a lightning bolt or attempting to re of <laughs> reinvigorate your units by draining fatigue off them. None of this should be easy. So yeah. they've got sort of, um, you've got like three spellcaster levels um, whenever you're casting. And then depending on whether it's a simple, complex, or ritual spell it needs a bit of a wind up now because everything can do three actions you can ready your character as he prepares the incantation draws sigils on the ground he does all these things that take a long time but every one of those ready checks that you put onto the, the model gives you an additional dice to roll and then you need multiple successes to um to get the, the spell off which means you can prep something over several turns to give you a bigger chance of actually getting the successes you need however because it's fantasy and people can see that guy drawing those big circles on the ground with pig's blood and getting ready to beat that chicken to death with a rock. They know something's up. And so at that point they become fair game to be, you know, shot full of arrows or interrupted by a melee charge. So, so things take time to, to ramp up. Um, and then you get your, you can do it obviously in one activation, you can just ready, ready fire and assuming that your opponent hasn't managed to interrupt you then it goes off or doesn't depending but i like that concept of spells are tricky to do not everybody should be tossing them off the cuff like uh you know harry potter or whatever is the kids watch these days i don't know um so i like that the other nice thing is undead which you've got various stages of undead you've got like muppets up to sort of whites and wraiths and complicated characters and when you've got your muppets they're not much more than automatons but they don't have the same impetus uh that a a living um person would have so you don't have fatigue and stuff to worry about but instead you have yeah. to do binding spells on the undead or demons because you could potentially do a demon list yourself because there's the points values for you to write stuff out that's um, cool and the idea is then you go okay well i need to bind it and how many successes give you binding tokens then the binding tokens allow you to do the activations instead but they're um, still capped at like three activations per turn the same as living people um but things interfere with magical fluxes as we all know cast iron is the best way to, to trap a witch therefore heavily armored undead are harder to bind and command because there's a lot of stuff that just keeps earthing the magic out of them so um I'm fascinated to see where this goes. Uh, obviously, I'm a big fan of Clash anyway. I think that the, the system itself is really solid um, and they've tamed magic somewhat. It's not, you're not going to be game ended turn one because somebody has uh, lifted all your toys off with double six on 2d6 uh, before the game starts. Yeah. That, that amount of magic. I know Warren loves it. It appalls me to the very core of my being because if I want to play a war game, I want to play a war game. I don't want to make it a two dice random check and oh, your your army's gone. Um, so I, I like that it's it doesn't take a, a back seat, but it's more complicated, hard, and your fighting is still going to really be what drives the games forward um, with a little soupçon of magic sort of sprinkled over the top. Uh, so yeah, nice to see that the, the guys over at Clasher are, are are working on this like i say friends have been play testing this list for oh i'm going to say about a year and a half now and constantly people have been going when are you going to do the fantasy one it's going no it's just these guys here have been working on it in the background as, as like a little fan project so um that's cool so, so yeah there's there's good times ahead for people who fancy clash and if you don't already know about clash uh you should uh there's a discord that you can join and somebody has even done a tabletop simulator version of clash uh -huh. uh, so you can get like um you can jump into the discord talk to people there go and play clash of spears see what you think about it uh, because it's a, a very different different game in these days of stripped back one dice solves every problem actually having a game that has tactics and strategy is always good um so, and because you don't need tons of models on the tabletop the little bit extra sort of bookkeeping isn't a major thing because 
it sort of accounts for what yeah, you're Yeah, I think you have to try and strike the balance, don't you? You have yeah. to make sure that the game is detailed enough that it's interesting to play, but not mm. unwieldy because suddenly you've got to apply that you've to... You've got to apply it to 150 models, yeah. yeah. Well, like yeah. I say, some people have decided to do that because some people uh, take, take, for take, punishment. take yeah. things to excess. I mean, you yeah. know, there's nothing wrong with it. We've all been there. Yeah. We've all gone, this game is great, but what if I put five times the amount of figures on the table? The answer is you lose a weekend. <laughs> that is the answer to what happens when you put five times the figures on the table. However. Yeah. That's uh, what Saturday mornings and Sunday evenings are for, putting away armies and building up tables. One hundred percent that is what they're for. Yeah. So yeah, if you fancy uh trying out a bit of Clash of Spears in a magical and fantastical settings, uh, mm. then check out the Archean Companion. Definitely. Yeah. Sticking with the idea of fantasy though. Yeah. But a little bit more. Uh, so going down the fantasy route, but decidedly not talking esque no. um, the folks at Simon have announced that uh, there's going to be a new kind of mini faction coming to a Song of Ice and Fire, the miniatures game. Uh, or TMG, whichever way you want to describe it. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is going to be a new starter set for House Bolton. So the Flayed Men are coming. Uh, this is going to be, uh, as I say, a new mini faction that's sort of designed around their core idea of these new starter boxes that they're going to be working on or have been working on for the different factions for a while now. Um, so House Bolton, up until this point, have worked as neutral sort of mercenaries in the game. And you've um, attached them to um, other factions from Westeros, so the Lannisters or the Starks. They could call on the aid of House Bolton, the little betraying bastards that they are, and uh, use them for whatever means necessary. But um, now House Bolton are striking out on their own, and they're going to be getting this new starter set that comes with a whole bunch of new miniatures in it. So... Uh, the miniatures that you do get in the set include the Cutthroats and the Blackguards. Um, so they have existed previously, but they're getting a kind of revamp for the starter set. And the set will come with cards allowing you to use them as either neutral forces, so mercenaries, or for a specific House Bolton army, if you decide to go that way. Um, new for the box as well. You also get the Dreadfort Archers, which are going to be your kind of uh, range units that you get to add get to add into the mix. Mm. And they are just as ruthless and deadly as the rest of House Bolton, as you might have imagined. Well, uh, ca Character-wise, you're also getting uh, a couple of uh, nefarious individuals that will be mm. walking, uh, working on the sidelines. So you're going to get Gene Pool and Fat Wilder are going to be dropped into the mix. Uh, and then as, the, as things roll on, uh, there's going to be a few more additional releases for House Bolton. So you're going to get the Dreadfort Spearmen, which uh, haven't been shown off just yet, mm. and uh, the House Bolton Heroes. I say heroes <laughs> in inverted yeah. commas yeah. for House Bolton. Pretty quotes. Yeah, uh, waving sausages around. Um, they're going to be added into the mix uh, for you to use in your games as well for a song of ice and fire. Uh, things seem to be going very much from strength to strength uh, when it comes to Simon to a song of ice and fire. A lot of people recommend it as a good game. I was a little sort of, I, I poo pooed it when it first came out because I didn't quite like the idea of having Ooh, to run you. the the war game and also the political sidetrack thing at the same time. But after watching a bunch of games being played and following along with what we did back when the game launched and things like that. Uh, I've certainly come around to the game. I know a lot of people don't necessarily like the idea that it's got a lot of repeat sculpts in the units and things, but I think that the sculpts themselves are detailed enough to kind of make up for that, to be honest. And uh, Simon definitely know what they're doing when it comes to plastic anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's translated over into the different armies that we're getting for the game, which is really nice. So. It's interesting because I thought whenever they announced it that it was going to be, obviously they were neutral at the start so they could jump in wherever. Yep. Mm -hmm. But I thought they might push it in the narrative sense so obviously mm. in in the books um they join wholesale with the lannister yes side yeah. of things um mm -hmm. it's interesting that they've decided to go well no you can still do that by by running the mm. neutrals but you can just go you know what i'm i'm going to stick my claim in here and, and play as a yeah. separate faction all of their yeah. own one of the things they were talking about is that there are certain units that i think will can will just be uniquely bolton so I think like things like the Dreadfort stuff is going to be very dis specifically Bolton-esque, but the Black Guard and the Cutthroats and some of the other characters will still be neutrals that you can fix in and around. So it's kind of like the core of their armies are still very much Bolton, mm. but then everyone else can kind of be filtered out into everyone else's armies, which I think is quite a nice way to go. So I suppose yeah. it makes sense that they can do something unique for the faction that mm -hmm. won't break the game if it was added to another different yeah. faction. 
Yeah. By so. going, well, no, they're Bolton specific. If you want to take the Boltons as allies, you're not getting those. You're not getting yeah. Ramsey and a bucket of dogs or whatever it happens to be. Yeah. I imagine it'll be Ramsey and a bucket of dogs at some point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I do believe the dogs are coming down the pipeline as well. So you're going to yep. see those lovely, those lovely bastards. Um, and that, that, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not just saying it for the sake of it. That's what they're yep. called, but there we yes. go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think we're all aware of yeah. where that goes, and at some yeah. point there will be a battle of them. Exactly. Um, so yeah, it's nice to see them them doing this. Um, I assume a lot of people have been asking for it in the wings and things, and pretty much all the factions and everything else has been covered now by Seaman. I think they've they've done pretty much all the stuff that's sort of appeared in the last while. I guess the only thing we're missing are kind of like the White Walkers, I suppose, as a force, um, which haven't really been looked at properly mm. but maybe they'll be coming up in the near future we shall see we've got the night watch and everything as well and wildlings and and tell. everything else in between well, what but about uh, the mercenary armies though uh some of the mercenary stuff has been done golden, i believe uh and I it, what the you, golden horde are called yeah i think some of i, I believe some of those have been done because they did stuff alongside the targaryens when they made um uh, daenerys's armies and obviously they did the, they've done the dragons and everything as well um i know a lot of people use the Simon stuff for skirmish games like Rangers of Shadow Deep because it, like all of the Night Watch stuff is really nice and uh, and unique and very finely detailed and so they take those models and pop them into Rangers of Shadow Deep so that's a thing for you if you're looking out for awesome heroes to use in your uh, skirmish games make sure to have a look at some of the hero packs that uh, Simon do but yeah yeah and then very obviously cool. do your Mormons of Bear Island it's not the one with yeah the... <laughs> Liana Mormont. Yes, do Liana Mormont. Yeah. Just do, just do a, have they done a faction of her? If they're cool men or not, are missing out. If they have done... there must be a Liana Mormont model. There must be. Well, yeah. Why would they not be? Yeah. If not, why did they not give her the Iron Throne? To be brutally honest. To be yeah, yeah. Because no. why, why well, brand? Why maybe brand? they will. Because yeah. I imagine, I imagine JRR when he finally gets around to for whatever his name is. I imagine George whenever he gets around to um finally writing the final book won't make the same mistake they did in the tv series and yes. give it to bran yeah. uh, whereas i'd quite happily be on board with uh mm. with terry and turning around and going and who has a better story than liana <laughs> <laughs> just catch she's leaning else. back eating crisps or something yeah. Yeah. why not <laughs> why not Picking right the to everyone else yeah <laughs> it's the way to do it Spoilers, by the way, if anybody hasn't seen the TV series, uh, series yeah. is is the worst thing ever committed to celluloid. Uh, also, uh, it's terrible. Also, I'm fairly sure we're all in the mindset now that uh, Martin's just going to he's going to pass away, and someone else is going to have to write the books. So, oh, he's, he's not writing the novels; he's, he's doing the TV series at the moment anyway. Yeah, so, yeah. why bother? He's working with Hideo Kojima now, so whatever. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So, oh, I don't know who that is, but okay. Yeah. Is that somebody famous? Video game stuff. Um, he like he, and he wrote loads of stuff for uh, Elden Ring and that uh, kind of thing. Okay. All so right. if you're wondering why the background for Elden Ring is so messed up, it's because George R. R. Martin wrote it. It's <laughs> going kill them, kill them, yeah. have them marry each other. Yeah. That's father and son. I don't care. Have them marry each other, and then kill them both. <laughs> yeah. All right, George. It's not not even far wrong. <laughs> no, no, it's pretty yeah. much bomb. Yeah. Uh, right. Mm. Moving away from. Cool many or not, ice and fieriness. Mm -hmm. uh, a whole township is kicking up from War Cradle. Yeah. Uh, so War Cradle Scenics do um, some really awesome terrain uh, that can be used for a lot of their different games and also beyond that as well. Uh, all of it's pre-painted or pre-coloured, however you want to describe it. Uh, mm. So you can easily just stick it together and away you go, really. Um, but their latest selection of terrain is focused around something decidedly sort of mythos and cthulhu mm. uh, because they've developed the Miscom Town terrain set. Uh, so this is the bundle that's available, well, going to be available for the month of June. Uh, all of these will be come out separately, as they have done in the past for some of their other bundles, so you'll be able to pick up all of these buildings individually if you want later on down the line. Uh, but they break down into, you've got the Elder Sign uh, kind of pub, <laughs> which I think is really cool. <laughs> Classic. Uh, which See is it there, at least, which is good. Yeah, which is apparently uh, full of ned wells and grumbling individuals that look mm. at you with a side eye as you walk in. Well, they would do. Uh, and like then the you've Art also, Deco look. Yes, it's yeah. so cool. Uh, you've then got the fire station, which is abandoned, but I think should be turned into a location where a bunch of ghost hunters yep. might work. I was going to say, <laughs> <laughs> I looked at the building, it was like, no, 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, so that seems like the perfect place to set up an agency and start hunting the, uh, the fiends of Cthulhu. You can even put a sign off the side there. You should yeah, stay you there the night to try it out. Yeah, just, yeah. Just put a big Cthulhu face and then the big red circle and line through it, hanging yeah. off the side. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Busting makes me feel good. Uh, you also got uh, a set of the townhouses. Um, so these are again yeah. really nice looking little buildings with that amazing, as you say, like Art Deco feel to them. And uh, they all come with interiors as well. So you'll be able to look inside them and they've all got coloured walls and stuff there. The only thing you really need to do with these is throw in some furniture. Mm. So if you were looking at some uh, some of the scatter that they get, they do from Mantic, for example, that would yeah, be really great for this. Yeah, create stuff, just chuck yeah. them there. So basically take some terrain crates, whack them into these terrain buildings and away you go, really, which is really nice. Uh, you've also got a subway entrance, which you can see there on the right mm. of the building. There's the uh, some urban scatter as well. So you've got like a news kiosk and some Bins, fences and railings. And... There's also the automobiles you can see there, yeah. as well, which is really nice. They're cute. Yeah. yeah. So the scale of these is kind of around their uh, like Wild, Wild West, West XD. Texas. So it's it's 35 mil, 35. but it would obviously easily work for anything from 28 through to 35 pretty much um i know a lot of people look at the stuff that war cradle have done uh, especially around the kind of like bayou stuff that they did mm. uh last year and they use it for games like malifaux for example so if you're looking for something that's not tied to the uh, dystopian age yeah then you can obviously go off and do some fun stuff with that or maybe incorrectly uh, use it as the backdrop to a uh, role playing game, as, would as Jerry would say. Why but would I say you? correctly. But yeah, so you know, because I like the idea of uh, you sit down for a role playing game, set around to like a six foot six by four table, and you build all the terrain up around it. And then as you go around your adventures and your role playing, uh, you, you sort of go from location to location. You can just, see it as a lovely map. Just or <laughs> or if you're playing. And I'm going back to miniatures games. It's okay, Jerry. If you're playing something like Pulp, uh, Pulp, Pulp uh, well, it's just called Pulp Action, isn't it? Yeah. Pulp, uh, Pulp, Pulp Heroes, yeah. yeah. Or if you're going into like 7TV or something, set up a huge table and then have it that the games master is there with you at the same time as you're playing games and they can sort of throw interesting stuff at you as you're running around the town and things like that. I think that'd be a really mm. nice way to do it. But yeah, cool stuff. I, I really like the name as well. Yes. <laughs> Miss Cam. <laughs> Yes. Not all Miskatonic and Arkham combined. No, not not that. Not Don't worry about all. it. Move away yeah. from it. Um, <laughs> I've I know I've uh, used some of the Wild Westy stuff on some tables for Dead Man's Hand, and mm. while it is a bit chunkier um, than sort of the twenty eight mil stuff that we had on the same table, to be brutally honest, you can mix and match to your heart's content. It's a couple uh, of mil in the end, isn't it? Really? Yeah. And it, especially so. when you're yeah. when you're playing around with things like that. You know, they're not. They're small villages and towns or townships that are built up over periods. So, you know, it's not like residential streets today where 50 houses are all built to identical specifications, having yeah. a, a bit of, you know, this guy built his house first and then this other fellow came along and went, oh, my house can be bigger in every direction by one foot <laughs> just to be better than you. Aha, uh-huh. I'm great. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I like those. Also handy because um, Mythos. Uh, is being blended with um, Wild West Exodus. Being worked into the dystopian age, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. it'll be nice to see uh, the the mythos stuff creeping back in as well. Maybe this is a sign that they're they're looking at that. Mm. I, I, I'd be really fascinated to see what people do with that. It's because, because it's pre-painted as well, mm. recolored anyway. You you once you throw some weathering materials onto that mm. and do some washes and things, I think it'll really make them pop as uh, pieces, which is always nice. So, yeah. yeah, anything that speeds getting terrain onto the table is always helpful. God, yes. Yes. Helpful. <laughs> right. The old world. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to make Jerry sad again now. Uh, always. So, Feel free. <laughs> You're not alone. So Games Workshop have uh, dropped an announcement this week as to which factions Definitely for Warhammer it. the Old World are going to be getting the physical book treatment as it were, um, for Warhammer the Old World when it comes out at some point in the indeterminable future. Um, so on the side, well, they, they've changed the image at this point, so it just mm-hmm. says armies, but uh, they had had it like this. <laughs> right. Uh, so the launch factions that are going to get physical books and be the focus of both supplementary and narrative material 
are going to be empire. So that's all the stuff that you know. But obviously, this is set during the time of the the three emperors and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Three emperors, yeah. Yep. Uh, and that kind of the the rise. Well, the moments before the rise of Magnus the Pious, you've got the Dwarven Mountain Hold. So you know the allies of the Empire during this tier, this period as well. Kingdoms of Bretonia, as we've seen in some of the previews, the Wood Elf realms. Uh, so that's Lorien and stuff. The High Elf realm. So that's going to be all the different enclaves that they had on the coasts. And obviously, Teclis is very involved in the formation of the Colleges of Magic, which mm-hmm. won't be technically around at this point. <laughs> we'll be very interested what they do with that, I suppose. Uh, there's also on the other side of things, and they say they said evil to begin with, uh, mm-hmm. but you've got orcs and goblins, uh, the warriors of chaos. Interestingly, not demons, warriors of chaos. The beastmen, bray herds, because obviously they live in all the forests of the Reichland and beyond. Sure. And then the tomb kings of Kemri. And I find it really bad that the tomb kings of Kemri got l- l- lumbered in with the evil forces. They might yeah. be skeletons, yeah. but it wasn't their fault they got turned into shambling death machines. You know, it was all about Nagash. Nagash is the bad guy. Everyone else was nice. <laughs> yeah, such was good, right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> There's nothing good about dry He's undead. Technically okay. good. Dry undead, Jerry, nothing is the best. Good Fantastic. About dry undead. I'm going to make a Camry Force in yes. my old yes. world yes. in front of you. I, um, I want so, to say something, but I don't think I'll get away with saying it. Oh, feel uh, free. Go for it's it. A, it's all fun and games until someone has to play the Tomb Kings. Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Weirdly, um, I so, got that Elven Men Hire. Sitting Somewhere. in next door, there we oh, go. it's been sitting on a shelf since I bought it when it was first released by Forge World, and has never gone yeah. further than being primed undercoated. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is this opportunity for me to dust that off and finish exactly. it. So, from what they've uh, said in the recent article, these are, those are the armies, the ones we've just gone through, that are going to be getting the the rulebook treatment. So you'll be able to get yourself a new old world rule book that'll have all of your rules in it. Mm. They're also going to be the ones that will benefit from the initial wave of re-released miniatures. So all the original plastic kits mm. alongside um, new miniatures from both Games Workshop in plastic and also Forge World in resin. So they'll be the ones that will be getting characters like the Paladin or the Tomb King Lord that we saw as well mm. uh, in some of the previews from Warhammer Fest. Now, obviously, that means there's a lot of armies that aren't getting the same treatment. Um, so, Dark Elves, Skaven, Vampire Counts, Wet and Dead, Demons of Chaos, Ogre Kingdoms, Lizard Men, and Chaos Dwarves aren't going to be getting the full treatment of the old world. Mm-hmm. But for anyone who still has armies that are atti- that are attached to that, those factions, uh, and miniature collections, you will get free PDF army lists. So uh, you'll have rules for playing the game. Uh, they won't actively be taking a part in any of the storyline or the developments and things that are happening, but they will have rules that will allow you to play those armies in this new edition of essentially Warhammer Fantasy Battles on the tabletop. Um, it, they they threw in some some law justifications for some of this. So the Skaven are apparently having their civil war under the uh, in the in the Under Empire, mm. and the Vampire Counts are currently licking their wounds. Although I do remember a, sl- a particularly large invasion of undead at some point uh, during this period. But there yeah. there have been numerous yeah. from all sorts of <laughs> necromancers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. Obviously. Uh, Armies like the Dark Elves, the Ogre Kingdoms, and the Lizard Men. Lizard Men are in the New World. Dark Elves are essentially in New World America, because that's what they thought of Americans back then. Yeah. <laughs> and the very Ogre, similar. Explains and the Ogre Kingdoms are fighting the, the Ogre Kingdoms are fighting out in the east as well. So they're not having a direct impact on what's happening here. But uh, it'll be very interesting to see what these three rules are like. And if anything, if you're a collector of those armies, at least you don't have to buy a big new rule book for them. You can just use the free PDFs, so <laughs> which is quite nice, I guess. Um, they they have um, also said that they're going to be diving into a little bit more extra detail about what's happening with all of this in the next couple of months. <laughs> when are they going to release this game? 2024 at this point? Who it knows? It really feels like they don't want to do it. Yeah. It, I... I, I, I Yes, I, I'm I'm very much on your side there, John. I think uh, they're 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 like kind of like, should we do this? <laughs> um, well, as soon as they mentioned it once, everyone was like, yes, do it, and they went, yeah. ah, 
there's, <laughs> there's some very notable exceptions from this as well. No mention of Cathay and no mention of Kislev, even yeah, though they've Which are were, the two that they started talking yes. about. Yeah. Yeah. Which is really weird, but we'll see. Um, I think one of the reasons that they've maybe staggered this in the way that they have is because they've realized that they now have to make a lot of new plastic kits <laughs> and also shift tension away from their core games to this as well, which I assume is going to be pretty freaking popular. Um, so suddenly a lot of people are going to be wanting plastic kits for all those different armies. And I guess you could only have so much capacity. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see like how it all comes together and what they do with it. But uh, it, but, it yeah. kind of feels like when... Um... When Blizzard turned around and said, uh, "Oh, you don't want World of Warcraft Classic. You don't mm. want that. Why would you want that? It's terrible." It kind of feels mm. like it's the same mm. thing, where well, everyone we'll, has went, we'll "We would it. actually want that," and mm. they've went, "Fine, we'll do it." But it's sort of, but, but you won't enjoy it, and we'll not make it fun. Enjoy it. <laughs> it won't be as fun as Age of Sigmar, sort of thing, um, yeah. and it'll turn out to be probably true. I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of nostalgia attached to it, but then after that nostalgia fades, I don't think we're mm. going to see a big. I'm, continuation of it I, I really want to get into this but i'm also kind of thinking am i going to see this through very heavily rose tinted glasses kind of mm. thing um that hasn't stopped me looking at the games virtual web store and beyond uh and going hmm maybe i should just buy a bunch of miniatures for my dwarves now and then i won't have to buy them when they go up in price <laughs> yeah there's already people selling uh, 25 mil bases for me to mount my dwarves on now. So I know. nice. <laughs> I don't know. I may. So um, yeah, but yeah. Sure. We shall see where it goes. I suppose. Um, it, it's both good news and interestingly sort of awkward news. I suppose for a lot of people. But uh, yeah, I, ju I just think the I think the decision to include tomb kings but not vampire counts is it is very odd, baffling, yeah. absolutely. Baffling. I think. Baffling. I, I think some of it literally comes from the idea that they're the two armies that they really screwed up in terms of people loved them I think that they I'm, didn't come through to the mortal realms. Bretonia, and so they're like, I'm, oh, we need to throw them in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah. But Bretonia, yeah, I can understand. Mm. Tomb Kings, I don't think anybody really cares. Shay's, Shay's uh, like I single tier. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you, no, nobody cared. Beastmen and Bretonia that didn't get army books for umpteen years yeah. those players cared and when they finally did a basement one it was hot garbage I don't was that with the Saigor and the, the, the they, they, they threw those in as a sort of little sot going yeah. hey your basement players have a new have a new model uh, or have a couple of new models and, and they were and they gave them the worst rules ever it's like why would I even field these I'm not going to bother they're just that. cannon magnets what are you <laughs> oh they weren't even that um, yeah so I mean uh, yeah. their they're, they're scattergun approach to armies aside mm. Uh, it'll be interesting because they've said it's between the it's before the rise of Magnus but during yeah. the three empire period so yeah, presumably so it will have to be the the latter you'd assume so because because the, 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 from the way that they've structured it I'm, I'm I kind of feel they're going to approach this like a big black books Horus Heresy style thing mm. They're going to really go in and try and do a lot of heavy narrative work for this period that essentially is a lot of scribbles, to be honest, <laughs> in, in in rule books of the past uh, and very much build on this. Um, it, it's a period that I'm really fascinated by, obviously, because it's, you know, it's nowhere, it's not attached to the two minutes to midnight that we had previous to this. But yeah. you've still got Avasar Kull coming right down the <laughs> the mountain with his Chaos Hordes. And, uh, you know, more time's still a thing at this point, so that's a big thing no, across as well. More time can't be a thing at this point. But Magnus of... hasn't burnt it yet. So it's yeah. it's a it's so it's a it's a big meteor based ruin, isn't it, at the moment? Yeah, yeah. Because so. if, if more time is still a city, then the Empire don't have black powder because they didn't get it from the dwarves till ah. after Mordheim got flattened, just before Mordheim got flattened. And I'm talking by like just like a couple of years before Mordheim Oh, yes, got, it's right from Bowman and stuff, isn't it? God, yeah. And they can't. They can't remove black powder from the empire because nobody will play them then, and it'll render most of their yeah. armies obsolete. So it has to be after Mordheim gets flattened, and at that point, lots of and other things like yeah. like the vampire counts. 
are well established by that. So it's just yeah. it's, my, you could just say they're not going to care. Well, they no, probably they, won't do they, now. Yeah, they will. Yeah. Well, well, they've already said that. Whenever they went, we're going to rebase everything right <laughs> off the bat. And, and, and before anybody goes, yeah. it's just rebasing because they can make dynamic models. The base sizes were chosen to help game balance. Tiny people like goblins and skaven and halflings and humans on 20 mil bases could face more people against bigger chaos warriors and basemen and orcs. That's why their points were set and that's why their bases were set. And the minute you go, everybody's on the same base, I'm going to go just play the bigger people because you will ruffle stomp every smaller army because they will not be able to stand toe to toe without getting the weight of numbers against you. When the new book comes out, I want to sit down with Jerry and oh, I want us to both go God, through it. No. And I want to appear like my bright eyed, bushy tailed oh, take on things. And then Jerry going, This is wrong. Do you want to see this pencil <laughs> disappear? I'll just, yeah. uh, I'm blind. I can't see it. Sorry. Anyway, right. But yeah, uh, moving time from, will tell. Yeah, moving from an old world that got destroyed and is being oh, renewed again to okay. the mortal realms themselves uh, with funnily enough, the people that started it all. Mm. The Seraphon. Uh, we're getting a full release of the Seraphon um, for uh, Warhammer Age of Sigma. Mm. Don't forget that game exists still, guys. It's okay. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of new characters for you to dive in and play around. You're going to get the new Battle Tome, as you can see there, which comes with the updated rules for them, alongside additional stuff for Path of Glory and narrative play. But character-wise... Special edition covers are just getting lazier. Well, yeah, because it's just let's remove the <laughs> let's take, remove take the, title. Take the red bar off the top. My God, it's utterly pointless. Yeah, I even think the artwork looks better on the normal one. Yeah, because <laughs> it's not been like weirdly colorized. Anyway, <laughs> uh, miniatures wise, we're getting the Slan Star Master, so we get a new uh, plastic model for them uh, with that little skink attendant. Um, so if you've been uh, battling around the ruins of Talaxis and you've been uh, fighting away in the realm of Gur, then this might be a fun time for you to drop in and start playing around with lizard men at the moment. The, Ser the Seraphon, sorry. Mm. Seraphon, that's yeah, their sure. name. Mm -hmm. uh, you've also got the Skink Star Seer as well. So uh, it might be tiny, but makes up for it with incredible magical powers and a He's seeing great, stone. Uh, but uh, yeah, some that's funky great. stuff. I, yeah. I love Skinks. They're so Every fun. time I see something, they just look great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's tiny there's gecko armies. Yeah. yeah. There's, some, there's something about little tiny creatures waging war that I think is great. <laughs> you need to get Total War 3, John, and just do a full skink army. Yeah. That's another computer game that's going to take like mobile data for me to download. <laughs> uh if you're preferring uh, things on the more martial side, then you've also got the Saurus Scar Veteran on the Agrodon there. Uh, so that's an Apex Predator on the back of an Apex Predator. Has he, uh, has he got a hole in the back of his chair so his tail sticks out? He does, yeah. Yes. Oh, that, must, that must require some threading by attendance exactly, before he gets yeah. on. Yeah. Right, boss, I, don't, it, don't sit down. Also, he, he can't dismount very quickly, surely. <laughs> no, it, I mean, all you need to do is trap trip the raptor up and he's gonna yeah. then i suppose like most lizards he'll lose his tail and it'll grow back it'll he'll just grow back yeah, yeah of yeah. course yeah problem solved oh so, yeah. gw always think one step ahead of us we were wrong <laughs> to doubt you gw <laughs> wrong uh so a big burly scar veteran there uh definitely showing off that the uh, saurus warriors have been given a bit more girth and um depth to them you've also got the saurus uh astrolith bearer uh much like penny mordant had to train for yep. many years to mm -hmm. carry that uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but a fun new model there if you're looking to boost the uh, troops at your beck and call as you're walking into battle obviously all of these can be painted as the coalesced which are the kind of seraphon that are more physically present within the mm. mortal realms or you can have them as the starborn which are their kind of like alien weird ghosty ethereal versions which i think is kind of badass you'll see some of those later mm. uh troop wise you've got the agrodon lancers um uh, so you've got yourselves some new um, cavalry units moving away from traditional cold ones uh to the new updated sculpts and stuff that we've seen for to those the Ag agrodon tm yes to the to the trademarkable armies yeah <laughs> as long as they still suffer from stupidity that's yeah, the, well, yeah, that was the only saving grace as they charged toward you. <laughs> uh, you've also got the Raptodon Hunters, which we saw as part of the launch box that they did. Um, running through with that kind of dinosaur, uh, but also slightly alien vibe, which I think is quite nice and giving off those sort of uncanny um, sort of uh, vibes as well, which is really cool. 
um which, and you know create some interesting ideas for painting and stuff especially if you like the idea of doing a little bit of wet blending with uh contrast paints and that kind of stuff we also got but, the big oh, sorry go on i love how they actually have the little javelin launchers yes yep yes. that's amazing they've got the little cool thing and they 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 were actual things which is really cool uh, for, for additional range yeah with your your spear sling or staff sling yeah. type of thing. yeah so yeah, little tiny skinks doing awesome things. More for John's new army there. Uh, I've also got the Croxagores, uh, which are going to be stomping into battle again, given very much a glow up. Um, they've now are very much the sore, well, the Croxagores that go, do you even lift, bro? Uh, as you <laughs> she walked down <laughs> the street. <laughs> uh, you've also got the war spawn version of them as well, um, which uh, come as an alternative build option. And then you've got the basic uh Saurus warriors i say basic they're still pretty badass big they looking look decidedly more hench yep. um with their little tiny dongs uh but yeah that, there's there's an alternative paint scheme for them that allows you to build them as more of that kind of like starborn look uh if you want to make That's them slightly cool. more magical yeah so yeah it's very godzilla just before he fires off some lightning yes yeah yeah godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, some really awesome new models there for uh, the the Seraphon, including the spawn of Chotek there. If you remember the old Salamander from yeah, uh, the the Warhammer Fantasy Battle days, that's basically what this is. Fires big balls of fiery acidic uh, goop mm-hmm. at you and turns you into a pool of uh, of nasty stuff. Poke its bum, <laughs> and if you roll a misfire, it turns around and eats one of the crew. That's how that goes. So good. Hence the forkage. <laughs> Yeah. I need you to turn that way and fire in that direction. Oh, no, my face. Exactly, yeah. Um, it's It very much seems like Games Workshop have embraced the... It's got um, feathery gills. I yeah, it's know. got an axolotl vibe yeah. going on. Yeah. Um, but lots of cool, big dinosaur stuff being added into the Seraphon that kind of takes them in that direction, which is really nice to see. Uh, and definitely a lot of new models there that have refreshed the uh, Mortal Realms. Mm-hmm. I should point out, by the way, um, even though the lizard men here are getting all these fancy models, anything that wasn't uh, that shouldn't be available in the old world won't mm. get rules and things. So, Slan will obviously, and Skinks and mm. Saurus, but Croxigore. not things like the big new Croxagores. Well, obviously, they will, maybe, I suppose, but not things like Astrolith Bearers or Agrodons and that kind of thing. That won't carry through. Uh, but yeah, just something there to. Are you sure? On. Depends. Well, on they have said. They is. have said. They have said. So uh, uh, yeah, just because <laughs> they've think, said doesn't mean it's gonna be. They're covering themselves, I guess. Mm. Uh, and then, last but not least, just something extra that I wanted to throw in because I thought it was pretty cool. Um, the cities of Sigma still moving towards their launch box. It's got to be around the corner. <laughs> uh, they showed off some new character models for the cities of Sigma, leading the way for the mortals of the mortal realms. Uh, that aren't benefiting from the help of the Stormcast Eternals. This is the new Free Guild Marshal, chap on the right there, and then his Relic Envoy, so his, his squire that has come along with him. Uh, the the Relic Envoy first, they are from sort of noble houses and beyond, and they've been called up to fight as part of the big Dawnbringer Crusades, and they carry with them reliquaries, as you can see there, uh, that contain... Uh, the, the head in of some cases, father? Yeah, yeah, actually, met family members, <laughs> and apparently they will sometimes talk to the uh, <laughs> the envoys and offer them advice or perhaps chide them for their foolish behaviour, um, which seems very necromatic to me. To me, but there we go. Yeah, don't, don't worry about it. I will ask for the community's help. There is a front cover of something. I think it might be a movie that has a green faced, noseless ghoul like that with its jaw at an angle and i've been wrecking my head for the past two days since this was revealed trying to work out what that was <laughs> pop that Help below us. please because yeah. i'm going to do my not otherwise yeah and then you've anyway. got the uh, you've got the free guild uh, marshal there on the other side who comes with a bunch of different build options um the the chat that we saw in the previous picture is great it looks very much like walter from uh, fable 2 which is mm. always good great game but then you've also got the other options there which come with different uh, styles of head which i think is really nice to see so you've got kind of like western caucasian and then you've got sort of 
black and asian faces in there as well which is going to be fun for people to play around with and and things like that and then you've also got the different weapon types as well which is always good so you can make lots of different uh free guild marshals if you prefer to drop into your armies um, they are actual hand cannons <laughs> yeah yep. very big balls at the end for uh for uh packed, packed with uh, yeah <laughs> i don't mind the um i don't mind the look Armor wise, it's a bit yeah. static, but I don't mind that. Mm. That's all quite nice, filigree and the rest. Yeah. The faces, I absolutely hate all of their faces. And it's I taken me a while to work out why they all look bored. There's no there's no character in any of them. They're all just, they're not, just shouting. Being, not shouting. Yeah. They're not looking angry. They're not looking afraid. They're just all staring, mm. closed lipped. They're all in the lunch queue. That's <laughs> yes, it. they are. <laughs> That's it. They've, they've all had to line up for something. And they've got their their one their one uh sculpt one conversion away from having their uh it, their AirPods in or something and listening to something <laughs> on the tube. Yeah, so. I suppose the good thing is with the heads being separate, you can wick those in the bin. You can and, and do whatever you want. Find some better else. ones. Yeah, but yeah, some uh, some pretty nice models overall. Um, sort of building on the Sigmar. Now we've seen cavalry and core infantry and characters. Got to be a launch box somewhere, folks. Kind of you keep hoping. Line. Hope springs eternal, oh, yeah. Ben, doesn't yeah. it? They, they, they haven't got time. They, they, tenth edition's around the corner. When are they going to release these? Jeez, God. They'll yeah. sneak out whenever the pre-orders for tenth goes up and nobody will notice. Yeah. Yeah. Can we can we sell these boxes before they get scalped? Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's enough of the news. Yeah. Uh, we shall have one more swish, and when we return, we'll wrap up the show. Okay, we are back for the end of the show, and the first bit of thing we have to look at is some 3D printing. Yes. Benjamino, you found not one goddess, but two. I did. And they're twins. Oh my God, all my dreams come to... (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) Uh, Right, so uh, this is a... uh, creator over on uh, my mini factory that i stumbled upon as i was wandering through the tribes system mm-hmm. uh, and so twin goddess minis has been working away on a whole bunch of awesome character sculpts that you could drop into your role-playing games and beyond as you might have guessed from looking at the miniatures they have a distinctly sort of chibi anime Cartoon. vibe to them yeah. <laughs> Uh, and there are some very inventive and interesting sculpts in the mix, including a triceratops with an Uzi and a sword. It's cobalt. Oh, right. oh, it's cobalt, but also wow, a triceratops. Ben. Wow! Wow! I'm I, yeah. I like dinosaurs. I'm on that's, dinosaurs. That's from oh, yeah. that's from the critically acclaimed anime Kill Bowser. Yeah, <laughs> that would also work. <laughs> yeah. Or if um, if people are playing Shadowrun, where you oh play, yeah, your, your Jesus, Shadowrun. Yeah. Sci- sci-fi cyberpunk esque yeah. fantasy. Yeah, man, I've got Triceratops on the brain now. (laughs) But anyway, uh, there's a whole bunch of different bits and pieces in here, which is quite nice to see. And there's plenty that would be really fun uh, that kind of give you those kind of narrative vibes, like, you know, the guy who lost his hand. Leading (laughs) a semi-autonomous life. Exactly, yeah. (laughs) Yep, sure. (laughs) We can reanimate part of you, but it's just your hand. (laughs) The rest of you has to stay as a revenant. Uh, but yeah, so there's some really fun little bits and pieces in here uh, for those people looking to kind of come up with ideas for their next role-playing character and things like that. I love that sort of big, dorky sort of mouse gerbil. <laughs> Even a rabbit head as well there. Oh my oh, God. Head. It's, it's, it's got head. all the animal heads. Yeah. You, you can choose whether you want fat cats or uh, guinea pigs. And away um, you go. Yeah. But yeah. A, that Jabby is really bitch. fun. I love those. I like the idea of playing like a big, oh. <laughs> big cleaver. That's for cutting up carrots. Yes, <laughs> that is exactly Just what that's carrots. for. Yeah, yep. Um, no squirrel, yeah. Though. very disappointed. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely one of those where you could scroll through this and sort of like put your finger on the screen and be like, wherever my scroll wheel stops, that's Ooh, the character I'm going to make next, kind of thing. I think it's quite nice. Uh, and also a lot of these things could be used to sort of develop interesting and 
diverse scenarios in your games as well. So if you wanted to go down the route of being like, what would it be like if I was invading the slime kingdom? You have that options. What would it be what like if, if I came... Justin was a vampire? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, right off the bat, his style and dress sense has improved dramatically. So <laughs> that going for it. It's a really nice walking cane as well. I like the fact it's yeah. a... A spine. A spine yeah. and skull, yeah. Yeah. That's the stance that Justin's in when he's contemplating why he never used his airbrush. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, but yeah, some really awesome stuff in here that I think a lot of people will be fans of, especially if they if they like to play around the idea of painting with big, bright, poppy mm. colours and things, because these very through. much lend themselves to that. Uh, and working on things just like more cartoony vibe, I suppose. It's, it's very, um, what was it, pseudo pop? Oh, it is soda pop miniature styles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And then these, these just—that's horrifying. Screaming, <laughs> uh, World of Warcraft goblins. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's deviant art. World of Warcraft goblins, though. <laughs> Fashion. It's got horns, so kind of yeah. So yes, yeah. That's how that works. Um, what I quite liked about the range as well is that it. I know this has become less of a thing oh, over the no, last couple of years. She's got vines. Well. It's the she equivalent does. of uh, getting, you know, lice if you've got hair. Yeah. To get vines oh, in your antlers. Yeah. Get the vine comb out. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, is that you've got a lot of kind of atypical fantasy races being represented. So you have the likes of goblins and things like that and the dragon kin and kobolds. But then you've also got tieflings and all the other types of uh, creatures in there as well. So if you're wanting to run slightly more of a monstrous party, then you have the option to do that, which I think is quite nice. And uh, yeah, some good stuff here. I, I think they're all kind of around 35 mil scale, which so is pretty I said cool. I Jerry there for a moment. I was 100% <laughs> on board. He could be Xylophone Jerry, just, yeah. He's yeah. not, he's a Gary. Oh. You can tell the difference. He needs a stool, whereas ah, I, need, I need to put my Xylophone up on bricks. Very you true. need to You need to yeah. stand in a trench. Yep. Yeah. Dig a hole, dig a pet. I've signed up for the play, <laughs> like Sir Patrick Moore. Yeah, that's funky. Mm. For assuming that bit could be left out, you could use that as a turn counter. Oh yeah, the yeah. Table. yeah, that'd be cool. Ah, yeah. it's running away from her. <laughs> <laughs> Come back, all her dice back gems. Down. Oh yeah, yeah, because yeah, there's the empty hand. Oh, brilliant! You could yeah. use it nice. as, a, mm. as a turn counter. Yeah. Just threw the other bits and pieces in. Yeah. Blend the other bit away. There's a band there. Oh, it's. Uh, I really liked uh, uh, level Udroth, seven, the demon god of metal or whatever that guy there. I love their sort of um, anime metal band. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> tentacle mind coming out of a pet playing the drums yeah. speaking of which if you're unaware of it um, Dr. Teeth and the Electric Band are getting their own film if you're a Muppet they fan are. yeah so just throwing that one out there mm. <laughs> so, but if you're looking so, for like an intellect devourer that plays the drums <laughs> why not that or if you want a many armed rocker who can play the drums and play guitar at the same time got that sorted it's essentially Dave Grohl as a miniature, mm. isn't it? Well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I was more thinking that's that's what Tenacious D see themselves as. Well, yeah, probably. Yeah, <laughs> not far away. Mm. Kyle and Jack oh, Black. Yeah. Is, that, is that a backdrop? It is. It for is. The crowd. <laughs> yeah. That's ridiculous. At the same time, great because if you're going to have a set of weird fantasy band members, why mm. not print a backdrop out for them? I yeah. like how they've got all the bottles as well. Yes. It's clearly yeah. Lemmy's on stage somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I like that each I like to think that each of those uh guitars is both a deadly mellow weapon, but also has like spells stored in it. Yeah, incredibly magical. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the acoustic guitar at the end being the most powerful of all of them. Yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> I think the most unassuming one. Wrote yeah. a book about that, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Mm. Professor Petri, free from his dish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, that's brilliant. Yeah. Now, the but, question is, was Professor Petri, A, a human who accidentally became a blob, or B, a blob that became animated in some way and has now actually done his master's and I think, I think it's a blob who, got, who did his doctorate, yeah. 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 Wants to become a human. <laughs> yeah. That is yeah. ridiculous. 
these have no business being anywhere. And I love the fact that they've done them all and bought big scale. Yeah. There is a wealth of stuff in here as well. There really is. Plow further yeah. down and see if there's anything particularly eye catching. I mean, the stuff, the, go, there is some stuff in here that is very much like standard fantasy fare. Like mm. you have like a dad barbarian, which I think is quite cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the owlbear hunter. I mean, how cool is that? <sighs> Eeny Martini. Yes. The, the fairy in the drink. The fairy in the drink. Yes. <laughs> there's the owlbear hunter coming at you, but without Sean Connery on his back. Yeah. Mm. Very much rocking some uh, classic well, Warcraft 3 vibes as well mm. with the Beastmaster. But, uh, oh, that's true. Pin and purple. Away yeah. you go. But yeah. So tidy Just up, gorgeous stuff, really. Yeah. But uh, I thought it was very different from what we'd kind of seen before. This cube hunter. I think it's fair to say that cube hunter has failed if the head is now a cube <laughs> with a skull on it. I like to think that the Glatton's cube landed on a, a fighter basically absorbed his brain and now has become the warrior that he always wanted to be transported around on the skull of sure. a dead warrior you, you, so. you tell yourself that and we'll all know that what's happening is they're dead and that's just going to envelop the rest of them so yeah <laughs> while their friends are shrieking <laughs> shrieking beside them yeah. i like the, the little prop sets mm -hmm. the, the, yeah. the, i mean the the backdrop the tavern set the, the drinky, office one Drinky the gnome mm -hmm. and Jerdurk the drunkard. Nice, <laughs> <laughs> nice double set there. There's a big, there's a wizard who lifts there as well, which is quite nice. That goes alongside yeah. the dwarven arm wrestler, which is cool. That I think I've seen that that particular wizard. There's a comic where it's like I'm out of spell power and he's just surrounded, and the, you know all the monsters are about to kick into. He goes, "I better show you how we did it in the old days," and rips off the top of his <laughs> and he's buff and just lays into them. I think that I is seem where to that's also come from. remember that. I it's exact same thing. Uh, I have no idea where it's come from. It's just a random thing. This is particularly bizarre. Oh, a yeah. little synth wave object pack. <laughs> If you're looking like a digital world to play in in Infinity, there you go. So, there's there's bound to be reasons to print those out for something. Yeah. That's what the ALF see when they go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you live dream of electric flamingos? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is beyond bonkers. Yeah. But I love it. But it's bizarre. And Aztec got like Axolotl there as well, which was nice. So, yeah. But yeah, there's, just there's some weird and wacky sh sh shiz in here. A lot of this is tied, uh, in many cases, to themed sets, as mm -hmm. they do with the tribes every month. So if you're interested in looking in and pick, looking up and picking a collection, then they'll do those, obviously, with your subscription and things. But then, you know, there's no wealth. There's no shortage of wealth <laughs> when it comes to the uh, different creations. Pangolin that fighters. I had a friend played a pangolin fighter once. That was very peculiar. He spent a lot of time balled up because nobody could touch him. <laughs> My AC is 32 now. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, unfortunately, the rest of you have been absolutely slammed, but I'm great. A kobold mariachi band. I mean, <laughs> even if you're not looking for things for actual gaming, there's some really nice painting projects in here. Yeah. The kobold is, mariachis yeah. look like they're kicking mm -hmm. off beautifully. Mm -hmm. Sticks drummer. Look, there's somebody from the very beginnings who looks like an actual character, what people would print out and put on a tabletop. Thankfully, they left that behind as quickly as humanly possible and went to Goblin Mariachi Band. <laughs> but sure, yeah, you know, you you do you, Lionel. But that's that's gorgeous, even even in and of itself, which mm. is nice. Yeah, it's a it's a weird and wacky, wonderful showcase of really is. of stuff. I wonder um, how much of the stuff each twin sculpts. Is it sixty forty, fifty fifty, <laughs> or is one the twin just do all the advertising? <laughs> Maybe they do it at exactly the same time. One of them takes the hand on the keyboard, the other one takes the mouse. Oh, they... like uh, McGee and Abby attempting <laughs> to stop the hacker. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's not how that works. That's not how anything works. Yeah. But yeah, I will imagine that that is exactly what they've done. There they are. Two cobalts required for the big double bass. Yeah. And away you go. It's The, the fact it's on one sort of probably 40 mil bass <laughs> is particularly bizarre. But then perfectly sensible for kobolds, the tidy little dragon yeah. face bastards that I mean, they are. What what weirder thing to throw at your dungeon delving party? Or is they 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 can hear the tinkling of music in the distance. And as they travel down the steps into the dungeon, they push open the door and you see before you kobolds, but they're all dressed as mariachis. 
<laughs> and immediately stop as you enter. <laughs> because they're all giving you the look of we've been caught, like Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Half halfway out of the place, their sequence on their uh, outfits glistening in the torchlight. Yeah. <laughs> like a rabbit in the headlights, they're frozen. That is mm. that is peculiar and bizarre, and I love it, Ben. Thank you very much for that. Something a bit different from the norm. Yeah, so, yeah. it's yeah. going to cost me some money. <laughs> well, for <laughs> Professor Petri and the Mariachi Kobolds, I imagine so. Yeah, yeah, mm. that's the way to do it. Mm. Right, that was the twin goddess encounter on the uh, the tribes, like the my mini factories, like the kids do with your ones and zeros. Go there, or if you can't understand what that was, it'll be printed blue in its entirety. So just look down there's that. Right, we have a triptych of Kickstarters. We do. Mm. Being very flash this week, being very avant-garde. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're taking the week off next week, so I thought I'd throw that some stuff in true. that maybe yeah. sort of slide down the scale. So yeah. yeah, it's a good way to do it, uh, especially the first, because I know a lot of people have been looking for this, uh, and we won't be here when it launches. Mm. So we thought we'd give you a heads up. Uh, so the first of our campaigns is a game found, which is between War Games Atlantic and Mini Wargaming, and mm-hmm. they're they're collaborating to do the damage. Um, now, we have actually got a start date for this, mm-hmm. um, which has just popped up, which is the 30th. Yes. So it will be running from the 30th of May. We're not sure when it's running to. I believe two weeks is the plan. Don't hold me to that. You'll have to wait for the thing to go live. However, if you do sign up in advance, uh, I believe you get a free uh, spree of the infantry um, for being on on Johnny on the spot Bonus. before it goes goes live. Um, I think that says that somewhere. You'll be able to look at the screen yourself. If it doesn't say that, then don't worry about clicking in advance. If it does say that, go nuts. Uh, so well, Charlie's going to go. We certainly need to give everyone a free spree. Yeah, yeah well. <laughs> Hi, Charlie. Um, I have sat down and talked with them about both the campaign itself and the stretch goals. Uh, so the campaign video is up already. The stretch yes. goal video will be coming. Um, mm-hmm. There are some stretch goals listed here. There are some we talk about in the video that aren't listed yet. So I have to be very careful about what I say. <laughs> ah, good luck with that, Charlie. Right. Um, <laughs> if, if you're unaware and haven't seen the video yet, the plan for this is Wargames Atlantic uh, are putting together a set of post-apocalyptic slash sci-fi cultist figures for you to make a cultist-based army. So obviously it's spot on for 40k players looking to do chaos cultists, um, but beyond that, Xenos Rampant or uh, anything post-apocalyptic they will work for. Uh, so the initial campaign is launching to fund the infantry, the brutes, the weapons team, and the command, um, of which you can see examples of the renders here. So these will be multi-part plastics, uh, similar to their other Deathfields range, uh, scaled in the same scale as the Deathfields range, so they are compatible if you want to do some kit bashing with any of the other miniatures they have, which means if you're looking for something a bit more heavily armoured, you can tack them in with uh, some of the Space Nam stuff. If you want to go a bit more uh, lightly armoured, then there's the couple of boxes of uh, cannon fodder that might you might just want to drag some miners out of the pit, scar their face up and send them off like a reaver oh, yeah. up against the small girl with an axe. Spoilers, <laughs> they will not survive that encounter. Um, but... The the kits will contain enough heads to do all of the, the models in the sprue with your choice of heads. So if you want to go gas masked, scarified helmet, lunatic, or the people who look like they've got sacks in their head where I think they've ripped all the parts out of their gas mask. Um so they're they're a bit more balaclava looking. Uh you'll be able to do all of the miniatures in a similar fashion. Um They've got some examples going, and you'll see more of these in, the, in some of the renders and paint jobs as well. Um, these are not the be-all and end-all. What you see here may not be the final sprue components, so they may yeah. drop some bits out to put extra bits in or double up on things, but you will be able to have enough parts to make everybody with the sort of the standard rifle type and then a slew of options, be it 
additional support weapons like the sort of the the heavy stubber or mg34 style machine gun um a sniper rifle whatever it happens to be they're going to work around it and if you are interested in this then get involved with uh, the chat in the campaign because it's really going to come down to a sort of a meld between wargames atlantic and the backers as to what makes the final cut for the sprues so if they're going we really want to do nothing but combat shotguns and people are going but nobody uses combat shotguns except in Necromunda where they're great. And by Necromunda, I mean the original. Because um, I have no idea what they're like in the new one or if they even exist. But you may discover that combat shotguns get dropped in favor of sticking a flamer and a plasma gun on or the ilk. Um, there's some really nice stuff in the Cult of Paint. I've been working on some prototypes as well. Yeah, They're kind of cool. These are utterly mad dog. Um, so the brutes will be compatible with the vein slash lanch uh ogres that they've already released so nine in a box multi-part again a whole variety of weaponry whether it's melee or um i wouldn't even say support weapons in this case they are they are like heavy weapon teams that are just walking forwards uh, a lot of this is going to come down to what they can fit on the sprue so you'll get sort of three sprues in the box which will give you your nine so there's there's like a hand weapon and shield there's the big massive chopper my favorite is the aggressive pizza cutter because uh, you know <laughs> when that comes at you i don't know what this has been made out of but uh, you'll know all about it when you get punctured um or the grenade launcher which is probably firing something more like mortar shells at your head uh, so the brits are nice and then the final two sort of sets from the initial campaign are the heavy weapons team which will let you make um, multi-part heavy weapons so they've got everything covered from a laser gun so you can use it as your plasma or las cannon you've got your mortar missile launcher a big auto cannon twin twin linked auto cannon type thing and maybe something more akin to a, a heavy bolt or you know they've, they've got the options there and again jam packing the sprue full so the last time they did a heavy weapon sprue was for the grognards and it was heavy weapon slash command they put so much stuff on the heavy weapon sprue that they decided to split the command out into a separate box Makes sense. Um, yeah. which means then they're mm -hmm. not having to they're not having to pull back on some of the options for the heavy weapons and likewise it means when they come to do the command they don't have to go well we can fit a head a standard and a power claw in the spaces on the sprue um instead they can do full command squad so you can have your your multi-part 12 miles, uh, yeah. yeah currently 12 men in there um who knows well if that's good because it allows it allows you to make your commander and then their team command squad yeah command squad so yeah. Yeah. medic uh standard bearer comms mm -hmm. uh fellow with massive club whatever it happens to be you can you can stick them together so the plan with this is very much a big cannon shot of kits right at your face going you want to be able to do a full army in one go bam there's a full infantry army in one mm -hmm. go um without having to sort of i think they average a kit a month currently with their their own production the reason they've gone with this is uh oh, there you go see i was right free damned infantry spray if you follow the campaign went well, done i don't have to uh to beg charlie uh right but the idea is they don't have to follow their normal production budget yeah. they can actually go ahead without taking a quarter of a year to launch this um and then get you the stuff you need to do a infantry based army and then after that we start hitting the stretch goals which are sort of a, a mixture of the mundane so the textured bases nice good save some time uh they'll be available separately after the campaign uh but then also the sort the of outriders yeah. the sprinklings of additional pieces so the outriders which again compatible with the other bodies and stuff that are out there so if you want to do bulldogs with pith helmets if you want to make your space praetorian guard have space british lancers in lovely blue surge jackets then this will be a thing that's coming nice. um, when they hit uh 150 grand they'll unlock that and they've, they've gone with an interesting one with the unlocks as well because some of them are you know like the sort of quality of life upgrades but then occasionally they'll throw in something like this where in, as, as a stretch goal um they're doing matt and dave from many wargaming as digital heads uh so 
somebody will win. They'll go through all the backers at that point and they'll pick one randomly and then you'll have your head turned into a post-apocalyptic lunatic and stuck on one of the sprues. Possibly the infantry sprue, might be the command sprue, it all depends. Um, but you'll be immortalized in tiny plastic forever. And then your friends can all put your face on their corpses or have them hanging off the side of their van if they're orcs or whatever. <laughs> like there's, there's a rake of your dead head, mate. That's how much we love you. Uh, so things like that, I like. It's a nice touch from just going, we're going to include another eh of ah eh on your eh, you know. So they have plans. A lot of it comes down to how far the campaign pushes. Uh, I, they've shown off a lot of the stretch goals here, including things like the damned artillery. So these will be big, think sort of griffin mortar or basilisk type big, heavy artillery pieces where you're maybe only getting one or two in a box as opposed to half a dozen heavy weapons. Um, but that that will be something to see when they get there. And, uh, and then they'll hit the sort of, uh, if they hit the half mil, I think that's as far as they've gone. So a damned vehicle upgrade sprue. So if you've got other kits out there or if you want to pick up some kits or 3D prints and want to make it a bit reverent, but uh, post-apocalyptic stabby, scarified, lots of people strapped on the front, like uh, Mad Max has a blood bag for your friends behind, um, then you can do that. Uh, there are plans beyond there, which I can't it's tell you about. about. tanks, didn't they? So They might have done. Might mm. have said that. I'm not yeah. saying. But you might see some of that. Nothing, nothing, John. We'd you might see some fair. of it in the um, in the other video, which I believe, if memory serves, we're going to put out next Wednesday. So, depending on that, only launches on Tuesday now. When we'd originally filmed it, we thought it was going to launch over this weekend, but it's been pushed back. So. You may see some sneaky reveals that aren't on that list of stuff from GameFound as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, interesting, interesting little campaign that they've put up there as well. Uh, and if this goes and the community sort of get behind it, they may use it in future, Charlie said, mm -hmm. for other things where they do some really nice stuff, but because they can only have a certain budget and, and if you focus solely on one area or one faction within an area it's great for the people who really like it but for people who are going well i really want you to do more greco-persian stuff for the end of empires you know you're um, gonna have to wait you're yeah. gonna have to wait because they're <laughs> they're taking up a quarter of their year's mm. budget and and yeah. production to do it so this lets them do something a little more focused and expansive without taking away from their their sort of their standard um mm. uh production i suppose yes so there you have it kicks off on the 30th runs for mm, two weeks he says nods as good as a wink to a blind bat you'll find out before us probably uh, but if you're interested in going a bit a post-apocalyptic sci-fi on the damned then uh, you should shoot over and give it a back and keep an eye on it right who's up next uh, so next up, uh, we're going to be looking to the work of Trey Manor from uh, Redbox Games. They are on Kickstarter Trey. right now with one of their small ranges that they're looking to make the focus of their attention over the mm. last while. A lot of people will know Redbox Game because they've done stunning work in the past mm. uh, for a variety of different um, ranges and um, a lot of their the, miniatures. The Viking-esque ones were gorgeous. Yeah. A lot of them have been used for role-playing games and fantasy war games and skirmish games and everything else mm. in between. But most recently, they've been very much inspired by uh, sword and sorcery of old, mm. as it were. So your Conans and stuff like that. A bit of Dark Sun as well, if you're looking at things from D&D &D perspective. Mm. Obviously, Frank Frazetta and his work. Um, and so they've been sculpting away on some incredibly muscle-bound heroes for you to drop into... Uh, whatever games you see fit. They are actually going to be doing their own game called Barbaria, uh, which is the name of the range as well. Um, but the focus at the moment is going to be on bringing to life at least the Barbarian element of this uh, sort of range uh, with a selection of um, one-piece metal miniatures that you'll be able to uh, get pick up in 28 mil and uh, use to build your starting warbands uh, and things like that. So you've got the likes of Thar and Zyra there, which are your two kind of like main characters that you would expect 
from a game of this style with that kind of Conan vibe going on. You can imagine it, this almost as kind of like the uh, straight to VHS version of Conan that came out from another production company or something, <laughs> where they hired all the bodybuilders in the local oh, area to dress up in uh, so bronze age armor. Like it's a bad thing. That's, that's a great thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then Word you've also Arnie. got you also got your uh, hordesmen there that you can see with their shields and so- shield swords, axes, maces at the ready. And there's also a selection of different hunters as well that they've been working on at the same time. Uh, so if you're looking to build a little tiny warband of barbarians, you've pretty much got it sorted there with your two hero characters alongside a bunch of kind of regular troops that you'd find um, fighting alongside them as they look to defend their village from marauding bastards in snake helms <laughs> uh, and of course you need to throw some snake men into the uh into the uh into the mix at some point what i'd suggest you do is you pick up these models from red box and mm. then you go and buy the snake man box from north star that they did for ghost archipelago and mm. then suddenly you've got an awesome sword and sorcery set already ready to go because you could just play it out with seven TV fantasy and have fun with that before diving into Barbaria whenever it comes out from the folks at uh, Redbox. It's true. Um, but yeah. It's a really nice range. I particularly yeah. like them because mm. I've got a lot of uh, Celt, Cesars and Druins for confrontation. Mm. And mm. I am missing specifically hunters. Um, I've, I've got one blister, so I've got three. I've got three Druin hunters with uh, bows. So being able to flesh that unit out a bit would do the world of good and especially when you look at the helmets on them they're oh, yeah. not a million miles away from the drones so that's so cool as well yeah they're class the other thing that's really nice about these is that they're going to be fairly easy to paint in the grand scheme of things because mm. the more muscles somebody has the easier it is to wash and highlight those <laughs> uh, and make them look pretty badass straight away um as jerry bids for it at this particular, Shut up. There we go. ignore that <laughs> Uh, it should be noted that if you are interested in the Barbaria range there, you can actually go and uh, <laughs> you can actually Shut go up. and check out their Facebook page where they've been showing off some more of the miniatures they've been working on. They've got new characters, new sort of troops and everything like that. They've also talked about doing uh, multi-part kits as well in the future, uh, be that sort of plastic or metal or whatever. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and yeah. Uh, you can also go and check out Redbox Games as it is mm. as it stands at the moment because there's actually some stuff over there for you to go and have a look at. Which is yeah, nice. so, yeah. but anyway, I'll stuff. let I'll let Jerry buy that. Yep, yep. <laughs> there are 15 days left on Barbaria. Yes, yeah. Uh, it's not quite funded yet, but not it's funded near yet. Enough, but so. give, give me a chance. <laughs> we won't be far away from it, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, last but not least, then uh, we have some work from the uh, veritable powerhouse that is printable scenery mm. uh, we've talked about these guys in the past and we've had a look at some of their ranges as well and in fact printed off a bunch of their kits mm. uh, in order to use for tabletop terrain of our own um, but they are working once again Toidals. with johnny fraser allen uh, in terms of bringing the gloaming swamps to life on the tabletop uh, so at the heart of this we have uh, two terrain collections you have the wilderness and then you have the swamp the wilderness is a bunch of twisted gnarled trees and everything you'd expect from a dark and uh, terrible forest where strange spirits live and then you've also got the swamps which are, as you might imagine, bogs, islands, mounds, and all sorts of different things, the secret places that you'd find out in the wilds, surrounded by mist. Um, alongside that as well, you'll also have noted that there are a whole host of creatures and characters that have all been sort of worked on by Johnny Fraser Allen and Matt Rauscher uh, in order to bring to life not just the terrain, but also the world that Fraser Allen's been working on to use as part of a fifth edition adventure as well. So all of the terrain and the monsters and the characters and everything else that you see here, which is all 3D printable, all been designed for FDM printers. Uh, you can take all of that and you can throw it into the campaign that they've already built, which comes with quests and monster stats and everything else in between that will allow you to play out all your games on the tabletop. Obviously, one of the nice things about the stuff that 3D Printable does as well is that they are always coming at you with the stretch goals. Um, and very much like what we saw with Hagglethorn Hollow that they worked on mm. uh, previously with Johnny Fraser Allen uh, and a, a host of other things as well. 
they've um, been designing loads of in- nice incidental pieces that will then get fed into the different pledges, um, allowing you to kind of expand on what you've already got and play around with it. Like they've been talking about um, things like big, huge mounds of dead body skeletons that have all sort of risen out of the murk, which is quite cool, nice. uh, as well as different characters and everything else in between that you could throw into the mix as well. So, yeah, if you're looking for um, terrain that would obviously be great for your war games, um, or if you wanted to use it for role-playing games on top of a map or anything else in between, uh, you have some nice options here from the folks at uh, Printable Scenery who have been doing, once again, a great job. So, yeah. There's... I mean, there's a shocking amount of stuff in there. I mean, look Even at that. It's a bridge troll. A it's, a, it's a bridge that's a troll. Yep. <laughs> I, I really like the, uh, the walking turtle thing as well. Yes. Yeah. Either bipedal or on all fours yeah. going, yay, reference. Mm. But when you look at things like the, um, just the terrain, even ignoring the monsters. Yeah. There's a ton of stuff in there. That'd be really good for a host of games. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's that's very those rune stones are very uh the hobbit from yes. trolls isn't it yeah just been frozen yeah. in time well johnny fraser allen did work at weta so <laughs> mm, that's true uh, i think he still works at weta actually but uh, does this as, on the side yeah, yeah. Hey, you know why not keeps him out of mischief and off the streets yeah what was the um cubicle seven game with the strange broken thieves? weave broken weave broken weave would be really uh, good with this yeah a lot of this terrain would be nailed on for that mm-hmm. creepy shifting weird things build your territory and hope that it doesn't walk off in the morning yeah because that <laughs> is just a whole host of nuttery isn't it very much so um but yeah loads of different things for you to dive in and have a look at with this Swap plants. Uh, they're, they're, i say they're kind of split over two pledges but you can kind of mix things mm. together and have fun with it as well and just the amount of stuff that they've worked on for in terms of creature features <laughs> just the creature features are amazing yeah. um so if you wanted to make an army of lizard men maybe you wanted to build a forces of nature army for kings of war you, you've pretty much got everything Whole sorted here I think, so. nixies yeah. yeah fancy stuff yeah. that is and also principal crazy. principal scenery have made a whole host of of uh campaigns in the past they've all done very well they've all delivered it's all available on the web mm. store. So if you want to go and check out some of their previous work, just go and check out Printable Scenery's website and away you go. So, yeah. Very cool. 18 mm. days left if you want to get into the glooming swamps. Mm. Gloom. It's like being on loam, that type of thing. Not gloomy, but loamy. <laughs> it's very high pH. You have to check your plants. Uh, otherwise, a lot of them will die off. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. That's enough of us for today. We shall return on Sunday for the XLBS, where our Cult of Games members over on tabletop.com can enjoy listening to us wetter away for a couple of hours on Sunday morning. Uh, You can get a 30-day free trial if you're not already a cultist. Otherwise, we will be back in two weeks, or you can catch up with us on the UKG live stream next week. <laughs> mm, that'll be fun. Uh, until we see you again, enjoy your gaming. Take care. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong? Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.